losing control, I know what that feels like. Being diagnosed with colorectal cancer in my 20s, when it affects men in their 50s, and there I was, lying on a hospital bed with a colostomy bag and absolutely no control over my bowels. From the sights, the sounds, the smells. And I was staring at my then boyfriend, my now husband. Is that feces on his face? I've never felt so helpless up until that very moment. Losing control doesn't mean that you can't regain control. My name is Chu Macy, and this is my story. It's 2022. Half the population are women, and yet so many of us are uncomfortable discussing the truth about our bodies, how they work, and how they don't. And that's why we're celebrating Her Stories, a special series that explores the physical, emotional, psychological, and social forces that influence female bodies and how we can strive for better health and happiness. We'll be interviewing amazing real women who have gone through life-changing obstacles. This special series was brought to you by Sunway Medical Centre in conjunction with International Women's Day. I'm your host, Cheryl Samad, and today I am joined by an incredible woman sitting next to me right now who's going to share her incredible story. Um, she is a host, entrepreneur, and she's a speaker. We've got Chu Maisie, and who will be joined later on by Dr. Jennifer Leong, clinical oncologist at Sunway Medical Centre, to share her perspective. But hello to you. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. It's good to see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You are multi-hyphenated. You also managed to complete your PhD in the US. Yes. So it seems to me like maybe, Maisie, you've always had a plan from the start. Yes, I would say that I did. I was pretty ambitious. Um, at the age of 16, I already knew that I wanted a PhD in developmental psychology to okay. raise awareness about youth issues. So I came back to Malaysia to do research. And while I was doing research in Malaysia, I was scouted to host an event. And that was my first foray into the entertainment industry. At that same point of time, I also started a social media business to help okay. small medium enterprises. So in the year 2014, actually, I was really busy. I was hosting um, quite a few events. I just completed hosting a web series and I've successfully actually defended my dissertation proposal. The second last step to getting my PhD yeah. and my business was on an uphill trend and that was when I was diagnosed with colorectal cancer. What were your thoughts when you when you first heard? I was actually having symptoms for one year already. Okay. I would have like um, diarrhea once a month. So I thought it was because my stomach wasn't used to Malaysian food. And I was losing weight, one to two kg for my already kind of thin frame. I thought it was due to stress. Yes. And then the other thing was the fatigue. I think that was quite serious. The last bout was that three weeks of diarrhea. I saw two GPs, mm -hmm. ate the medication, it didn't work. So my dad thought it must be H. pylori. Yeah, yeah. And no one expected it to be cancer. Of course, when you are hit with such incredible news like that, right? The first thing will be the shock. And then when things settle down, you think, how am I going to pay for this? Yeah. What was your experience like with that? I think especially in your 20s, medical insurance, that's not something that people in their 20s you think, think about, about, right? It, absolutely, yes. So, um, I, in a way, I was kind of lucky that I was aware about insurance. But what I didn't expect was the cost of medical treatment. And the second thing was that my insurance agent, who was my high school friend, actually took my money and he didn't remit the money on my behalf. And the yes. policy lapsed. So I was like, wow, um, where am I going to get this money from, you know? I'm sure. So it's very important that people actually get medical insurance. It's important that they know the coverage that comes with it. And if you want to remit your money, remit it directly to the company and exactly. not to the person. Exactly. I think that was my mistake. What would your advice be to someone who's watching today, who's going through something similar that you went through, in terms of um, how you take care of your body, your mind and your soul? I would say the first thing is acceptance. It was after I accepted my condition, accepted what I had, that things became much smoother. I wasn't fighting it anymore, sure. resisting it. And the second thing is to set mini goals, to have realistic expectations of your body, which is physical, and mentally know that sometimes it's okay not to worry about the small things. Mm -hmm. And emotionally, that helps too. That's really good advice, mm -hmm. Hello, Dr. Approximately one in four persons will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their lives. 
cancer is an enigma and a great source of fear. But with the advancement in medical science, it does not have to be. And with us today to elaborate on that, we have the lovely Dr. Jennifer Leong. Hello. Hi, Cheryl. Thank you for having me here today. So you are a clinical oncologist. That's right. Right. So what exactly is colorectal cancer? To put it simply, cancer is always um, labelled or named after where the, the tumour arises from. Mm -hmm. So colorectal cancer essentially means that there is a malignant growth um, that arises from the tissue or the lining from the colon wall. Okay or rectum. And rectum is, is, is basically the terminal part of the colon. Mm. What's very important in preventing the spread of, of um, colorectal cancer is to be screened. That's right. I've listened to Maisie's story yes. and um, colonoscopy save your lives. So, so I can't emphasize enough that for certain cancers, screening is very important. Mm -hmm. So when we say screening, is essentially a method that has been validated all across so it is cost effective okay. and you essentially screen to look for in a healthy individual so someone who hasn't had a symptom so you potentially can pick them up at stage one okay or yes. even before they turn pre-malignant Maisie you lost control over what is essentially a very basic bodily function how did you go through that? I went through it by actually accepting what was gone from my body. Basically, the first surgery removed most of my rectum mm -hmm. and 12 centimeters of my colon. So That's a lot a was actually removed and living with the colostomy bag at first was difficult the first two weeks. But after I met a very kind colostomy nurse and she taught me how to take care of that open wound. And um, because I don't have much of a rectum, I went to the toilet 20 times a day for the first six months. It was, that was a huge adjustment That's for me. That's practically the whole day. Yeah. So right. I had to be near toilets that are clean. I was a bit afraid to go out at first, but then I adjusted to that. So losing control, Dr. Jennifer, is a very harsh reality of someone suffering from cancer. What would you advise your, 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 your patients in terms of taking control, that control back for themselves? I think this, this is such an important aspect. Being able to guide your patient towards taking control is one way they can feel empowered. You know, at least they have control over a certain part. You mentioned once in, um, in um, one of your interviews, Dr. Jennifer, that um, you have to always maintain your composure when you speak to family members of um, the cancer patients because cancer affects everyone around you. Mm. As devastating as it is for the patient, Absolutely. it's yes. equally devastating for yeah. the parents, the family, the husbands, their wives, exactly. right, and their children. What would you advise the family in terms of coping with uh, or caring for someone with cancer? Because we know that woman is the backbone of the family, of course. right? Yes. So um, it does not just affect the woman. It, it plays such an important role. What I would say that um, it's, it's important if you could come for follow-up with the patient. Yes, um, so that you understand least, the journey. Yeah, so they understand and they understand the rationale of the treatment that I'm giving. And also just to offer physical support. Sure, yes. Uh, small things like, you know, even preparing meals for your children is so important. At least it take the mind off the um, One thing patient, that you have to do. Yeah, and they can just focus on recovery and, and treatment. So Maisie, how has life changed for you now that you've overcome this huge obstacle in your life? I would say that Definitely before cancer, I was leading quite a healthy lifestyle, mm -hmm. eating clean, sleeping a lot, not smoking, not drinking, nothing like that. The only thing I didn't do was exercise. So after cancer, I now work out six times a week. Six and, times a week? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and in terms of my food, um, I'm e eating even more clean now because my stomach is extremely sensitive. And more importantly, my perspective on life has changed. Before this, I stress over the littlest things. Now I don't anymore. I would say I'm still in this cancer journey because you never know. So you are such an advocate on healthy living, six times a week with her workout <laughs> and everything. It's amazing. I know. <laughs> Do you let yourself indulge at all? Yes, all the time. <laughs> I still eat my desserts, okay. I'd say. Um, I love it, but I just don't eat as much. Okay, sure. Yeah. In moderation. In moderate. Everything in moderation. And I would advise all cancer patients and survivors as exactly. well. There is no particular anti-cancer diet. Sure. It's just eat a well-balanced diet and especially you know I think Dr. Jennifer would say eat whatever you can especially if you're undergoing chemo and you just need to get nutrients in your body yes, yes. that's very sound advice yeah yeah. yeah it's important to 
continue to be able to eat because yes. a lot of time when they're diagnosed with they cancer, they don't want to eat. They limit the kind of food yes. and then they, they become very thin and they get malnourished yep. and that is not helping with their immunity. Yes. So eat a well-balanced diet and then get enough rest. And I do agree that stress actually leads us to um, have very unhealthy, you know, lifestyle. Yes. Uh, so 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 minimize on the stress or learn to cope with the stress, and go for your follow-ups. Yes, I agree. Thank you, Doctor Doctor Jennifer, and also Maisie for sharing with us um, the truths about cancer as well as your personal journey. And we, I, I appreciate how vulnerable you were and how honest you were with all of us today. Cancer is not a death sentence, it can be beaten. I think that's the important message you want to send out today. Yes. So take control of your own body and share your story with us with the hashtag SunMetHerStories and you never know if you could be helping someone who's watching today. Visit our website for more information on women's health and also our guest. See you in the next video. Bye!